Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the one and only an amazing person, investor, and friend, Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? Well, after that introduction, I'm doing great. It's great <laughs> to be here with you always. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, um, I think more and more people are picking up on something you and I have talked about for months, if not quarters, and that is, you know what, we're going into a housing recession. Transactions mm -hmm. are going down. Yes. Prices, not so much. Right. But transactions are going down. Uh, as we talked about in video number one, both you and I believe that we're, we're you and I default to believing Jerome Powell's serious. We'll see how yes. much how serious on the 21st of September. But as of right now, we're believing him, which means rates are going up. Right. Fed, Fed's funds rates going to four, four and a quarter, four and a half. The 10 years probably going to five and a half, which means the 30 year money is probably going to have a seven on it. Owner Ock, not seven percent investor, seven right. percent owner Ock. Very so, possible. Yeah, it's possible, right? So my again, I'm trying to always looking around corners, and, and when you do that, you're wrong all the time. But <laughs> Anna, I gotta tell you, I now see 2023 as a housing depression. So let me define that and then I'll let you react. So I think a recession is, you know, or a crash is 25, 30 percent. We're already there. Yes. I will call it a housing depression when we go down new construction transactions go down 50% and existing home sales go down 50%, which all the way back to 1970s only happened one time, and that was in 1981 and 82. I think it's going to happen again. It's not going to be fun. There's not going to be some epic price crash. Some markets will feel, feel pain, Boise, Phoenix, Vegas. The, the list is is there. But nationally speaking, Eh, it'll be kind of boring, I think. Single digits one way or the other. But a 50% crash is coming. It'll be a depression in housing, and it will be enough to pull the country into a recession. What do you think of all that? And what do you think of my dire prediction for 2023? Yeah, you know, I, I think because real estate, like you said, is very regional, different markets are going to fare very differently. Um I do think that when you talk about transactions, we're already down a quarter, you know, 25% um, new home sales and existing home sales across the country with multiple increases in, in um, price reductions, days mm -hmm. on market. Cancellations. So exactly. Yeah. So the transactions are definitely already falling. So we're halfway to your dire prediction of 50% already. Mm -hmm. And rates have not gone up, you know, painfully yes they've gone up but we're still kind of in the historic you know low rate range mm -hmm. when the fed continues to raise rates over the next you know over this at least the rest of this year i think they go up at least another you know point point and a quarter maybe even point and a half depending on where things are yeah it could be a point and a half i mean it could be a 75 50 25 it really could it could be. Yeah. I, I'm kind of thinking 75, 25, 25, but, but yeah. I don't know, right? They're, they're looking at data, they say. But the point being that interest rates are still going up. And here's the thing where prices are now, most deals don't cash flow. Mm -hmm. They barely cash flowed before the rates started really increasing. And okay. so, you know, for investors, unless you're a large institutional investor, you've got to get properties at a much lower prices when you're paying higher rates. And so that means that prices have to fall in order for you investors to really swoop in and mm -hmm. scoop up the supply. Um, homeowners are already squeezed. I mean, interest rates have doubled from where they were looking before. Um, and, and here's the other thing, Michael, in terms of transactions, when you have people who don't want to sell their home, because even to downsize I think, Anna, we lost your sound. I can't hear you. Oh, there she is. You're back. Sorry about that. That's okay. So what you were, you I lost you, you when you were kind of painting a vision about people don't have to sell and then you went quiet. Okay. So essentially, sellers are now in a position where they don't have to sell unless they're in dire straits, or maybe they have a job transfer. So when given the option of let's sell my house, they're not going to find a nicer home for a better mortgage payment because most sellers- Not even close. For interest rate, you know, 80% or so. And so it's going to be very expensive for people to move. So you're just not going to have this, you know, huge influx in supply other than maybe- 
second homes, vacation rentals, where people really, you know, feel like they can't afford them anymore. Um, so the demand is going to be stymied, but supply is as well. And I think that that really causes transactions to come down significantly as this thing continues to your point. Um, and, and prices may or may not come down depending on, you know, the supply and the demand in the local market. Yeah, I'm even uh, I'm even sitting here now thinking that I think we ended the last month. We'll get we'll get this month's report in about a week or so. Let's say we end the, let's say we end August, which is today, August 31st, at 1.3 million active listings. Let's just pick a number. There'll be one three, one three five, sure. something like that. Anna, as I sit here today, I think we go down. I think September inventory goes down, October goes down. To, and again, there's a lot of people talking housing crash, like like inventory is going to go to the moon. It's not coming, folks. I'm sorry. These people don't. Yes. Just like I said, July 20th happened. A lot of mom and dad said, hey, let's go get peak pricing. Let's sell. Some of them yes. did. Many of them didn't. They are yes. now pulling their listings off because, again, what people don't really realize with housing is they don't have they got to live somewhere. And wanting to sell is not needing to sell. Right. Right. Very different. Yes. And especially in bigger cities where jobs are plentiful, there's really no reason now for people to move, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in kind of tertiary markets where there's not a lot of jobs or there's only a couple of key employers and they start to lay people off, maybe you you move because of a job transfer, right? And so you you sell because you feel like you have to um, if, if you're tied down to a certain industry. So I think in some of these tertiary markets where jobs are not quite as plentiful, I think they'll start to see some some pain and maybe more people list. But really what I'm seeing mostly, and, and I'm a vacation rental owner, right? And, and, and I'm happy to own them and I'm looking for great deals when those fall. But what we tend to see go down first and a lot of people list are vacation rentals because they're worried that vacationers aren't gonna come during a recession. They're already kind of seeing a slowdown in rentals. And so there's a, a huge uptick in listings and vacation rentals. Um, so I think that's really the only spot where I expect mass you know, listings mm -hmm. and more supply then maybe the demand that can take them down. Um, but again, that speaks opportunity for us that want to go buy them. Yeah, I mean, you and I have talked about the Airbnb market, and I think that's one of the markets that's going to hurt new investors. The people that have the beachfront properties like you play in, the A stuff, the A plus stuff, yes. will be totally fine. Yeah, It's a, it's a numbers totally game. Good. Yeah, it's a, it, as, as I would expect, not even knowing, I would have totally expected that. But there are so many people on them that came to Airbnb or VRBO, short-term rentals, and they said, I can't afford beat front like Anna. But what if, what if I went down the street, across the freeway, over the road, behind the you know cemetery? Yes. I can buy that one in, in Airbnb. That I'm going to be fine. Look at the daily rates. I'm golden. No, you're not. Right. Absolutely. And I've seen it over and over and over again. Oh, so, so bad. You know, that that's that's unfortunate. But, you know, to your point, I, I don't think we're going to see a massive decrease in home values across the board because there's just not enough demand and there's no reason for this, the supply to uptick. We're not um, going to have the wave after wave. Right. That's what that's what happened to you and I in the Great Recession is every week. Again, my market was a drumbeat every Monday. Nine o'clock was a new load, a new load, a new load of REOs. Yes. It's not coming, folks. We're going to go backwards. I think we have less inventory in my market in December than we do today. I think that's in most markets. And you don't have a price drop, at least a meaningful one, when inventory goes the other direction. It just doesn't work right. that way. Right. Absolutely. And we're still seeing an increase in prices yeah, I know. in many of these markets. So even though the supply has come on, there's demand kind of waiting in the sidelines. And so I, you know, we're not going to have this, this mass real estate price reduction, I don't think, you know, nationwide, although mm -hmm. some areas could, yeah. um, be, simply because of the fact that people don't have to sell and they've got sub 4% mortgages by and large. And mm -hmm. you know, before the last major housing crash in, in 09, let's say, um, you had tons of variable rate mortgages at much, much higher rates. And that's why people were underwater. So people that can afford to keep paying their mortgage payment, even if the value goes down on their property, they're just going to keep it. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's the option? They're going to rent? <laughs> really? Maybe. You think rent is cheaper? No, rent's going up because uh, less. Sure. There's, there's actually less single family rentals because of the eviction moratorium and the, the pandemic. A lot of landlords have 
at least, again, this is according to John Burns Real Estate Consulting, available yeah. single family rentals have gone down two years in a row. The first two, the first time that's happened uh, in, yeah. in, in decades. Absolutely. And that's why a lot of big fund funds are, you know, partnering with builders to build single yeah. family rentals, but they are not going to be cheap. It's just that you don't need the down payment to get in them like you do your own house, because exactly. as costs go up and taxes and insurance have gone up significantly for us um, investors, our rents have to continue to go up to keep up with it. Yeah. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a special fourth video because I am excited about opportunities in 2023 and try to, instead of trying to bolt it on here, we'll do a fourth episode just with how excited we are about the opportunities in 2023. But before we do, Anna, how, where can people find you? Great. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom, and on my website at REIMom.com. Thank you so much. Thank you.